Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores week two of mark making. The voice you're hearing now, um, my name is Kay Slater. I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts and I'll be uh, guiding or leading you through today's exploration of mark making. So I said this was week two. Um, if you if you want to go back and check out week one, you can at any time. This video is going to continue and we'll have it archived afterwards. So if you want to go back to week one, you can, but there's no order uh, to your exploration. This one doesn't come after, it's just more exploring. So if you want to check out week one, you can go back. And if you're watching us on Facebook, it's in our videos section. If you're on YouTube, we have all of our sessions um, in, in our YouTube channel. So you can check out any of the weeks, um, as well as on our website, which is artstarts.com slash explorers dash online. So if this is your first time making with us, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Um, if this is not your first exploration, you've been with us uh, lots of weeks, you know what's coming next. And that is us going over the three uh, rules or kind of guidelines that we like to follow when we explore together. And these aren't hard rules. These are just things we like to keep in mind while we're exploring um, so that we're kind of all in the same place and it helps encourage us uh, to to make and to uh, not, and not really uh, put too much pressure on ourselves. So the first rule of explorers is that we like to practice respect. Some days we're better at it than others, so we're practicing uh, so that we can get better at it. We practice respect with ourselves. Uh, we, we're kind to ourselves. If we didn't sleep so well, uh, if we didn't have access to breakfast this morning, uh, if we had a fight with somebody, we might not be as enthusiastic to make this week as we've been making uh, in previous weeks. And that's okay. You can name that. We might be really excited. We practice respect for each other in that same way. You might be feeling really great and energized, but somebody else who's making with you, one of your grown-ups, one of your siblings, one of your neighbors, one of your friends, Anybody who is making with you, um, they might not be feeling so great. So give them some space. Allow them to make at their own pace. Maybe they're high energy and you're not high energy. But if you name that and talk about that before you make, that can, uh, that can help things go a little smoother. We practice respect for our tools by putting them away when we're finished, by using them safely while we're exploring, uh, by sharing them with the other people we're making with. And we practice respect by acknowledging the land um, and the people whose land we are on. So where you see my hands, this studio right here, I'm broadcasting from the stolen or unceded territories of the Coast Salish people. And in particular, the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish people. And um, I'm an uninvited guest on these lands. And if you are also on these same uh, lands making with me, we want to uh, acknowledge the, the people who have been here since time immemorial and are still here. Um, and that while we are on these lands and while we are making, we want to be respectful guests um, while we make and practice. Um, so those are a couple of different ways that we can practice respect. The second is that nothing is for keeps. So everything that we're making today is just practicing. And that's really freeing because it doesn't really matter if we make a mistake because we're just trying things out. In fact, you can make a mistake on purpose to see what you learn from it. And because nothing is for keeps, we're not gonna frame it, we're not gonna put it up on our fridge, you can take things from your recycling bin. You can take them apart when you're all finished. In fact, that can be the hardest part of your practice today. And I encourage you to try when you're all finished, even if you make something really, really cool, you might wanna show it to somebody. But when you're all finished, try to rip it up, crumple it, or put it back in the recycling bin because we're just trying things out. And then the last is that there are no expectations. And because we're not trying to make anything that's really good and perfect, all ideas are good ideas. Remember I said you could try to make a mistake. If you already know how to draw something or how to make a mark really well, try to make a bad mark. Try to do it in a completely different way than you feel comfortable. And that can be hard. But this is the time to practice because nothing is for keeps. Now's the time to get out your sketchbooks or your, um, or your paper from the recycling bin and just try something new. Also, you can practice surprise. So if you don't know what's going to happen, 
that's more interesting than if you've drawn something a hundred times and you just do it again. Sure, there's some, some comfort um, in knowing what's going to happen, but today I give you permission. This is the space for you to try um, and surprise yourself to see what happens. So those are the three rules of explore. So we're gonna have those, we're gonna keep those in mind as we are exploring mark making today. So you know I'm Kay. I'm gonna move all of these to the side so we have a bit more uh, making space here. I'm gonna move my mini host and the sandwich board over to the side as well. And let's get started um, exploring some mark making. So what I have in my studio today is some paper. And you can see this was just paper that I got from the recycling bin. It's ripped up. It's got a hole from where it was part of a three hole punch. Um, and so I just took this out of the recycling bin and I'm just gonna practice on it. So if you have some paper and you can make along with us, go grab some paper. And do you also have a mark making tool? And what's a mark making tool? Well, a mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. So that could be a crayon, that could be a pencil, that could be a pen, that could be a marker, that could be a pencil crayon, that could be, um, this is a, this is a grease, um, a grease crayon, uh, so like a, a, an oil stick that I have here. Um, you could use a pastel, you could use um, an oil pastel, a chalk pastel, you could use chalk. This is white chalk, so it might not show up on there, but who knows? Practice surprise. You might think that you know that the white chalk isn't gonna show up on white paper, but have you tried it before? And if you have different color paper from the recycling bin, why can't you use the different color paper? You don't have to use white. The reason I try and find white paper for explorers is just because it's a little bit easier for you to see. But just because I use white paper doesn't mean that you have to use white paper. So once we have some tools, and if you don't have any of these tools, you can just watch. You can participate by watching and um, imagining, listening to my voice, reading my captions, and uh, coming up with ideas in your head. That is, that is just as active making as putting a mark on the page. Okay. So I think this week, what we're gonna try is uh, we're gonna explore words. You might go, wait a second, words? I thought we were going to be doing mark making, Kay. What's going on? Well, if you, uh, if you participated last week, you, uh, you might know, you might start knowing where, uh, where I'm going with this, but um, what are words made out of, right? Words are made out of letters, but what are the letters made out of? marks, right? To put it on the page, we have we to write the words, we have to make a mark on the page. So what I thought we would do is we would use words to inspire us, but also to try and communicate messages. So I'm going to take a random word. You know what, I'm going to take cat. Because I like cats. Most people like cats. And so I'm going to think I'm going to you know, think I'm going to actually look at the word and you can as well. Here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that you can see. And I'm going to do it all in caps. Even just writing it twice, we can look at how different this is. When I did it smaller, I did it in lowercase. I did my A's differently. I did my T's differently. I did my S's differently. These are all marks. If you were to look at them without the word, right? Sure, that's an S. But what if we turned it on its side? And what if we turned it upside down? Actually, it ends up looking the same, but this end looks a little bit bigger because of how I drew the S. These are just marks. If you were to just use that S and draw nothing uh, or draw something using nothing but S's, what would it look like? If you were going to draw a picture using nothing but T's, what would it look like? So before we even get drawing. We just wrote a word. There's so many things to check out and look at just with four letters, with three letters, with a letter. But that's more exploring uh, what we did last week with uh, the individual letters. I want to look at this word as a whole, cats. And if you can read, if you can read English, um, you might have a picture in your head. You might have um, a sign. You might actually know different languages that this translates into. This word on its own might be so much more than just the letter C-A-T-S. But if we were exploring English and we were exploring the word cats, which means more than one cat, singular, 
What can we do with this word to express multiple cats? Well, we could look at the word in multiple ways. We could, we could do what I was doing before where I could turn it around. to see what, uh, how we're inspired. We could look at pictures of cats and then come back to our word. We could start exploring each of the forms and see about making this into a cat. So I'm gonna start playing with these, these lines here, but if you're using the word cats as well, try something different. You can copy me exactly, but if you get an idea just by asking yourself, how can I express cats, multiple cats, with, with these letters beyond just writing them, go for it, see what happens. Well, the first thing that comes to mind for me when I think of cats are those swishy tails, those tails that are so expressive. They say so much. Um, and if you're really paying attention to the tails, you can, uh, you can understand how cats are feeling. And so this S here, it reminded me of a tail. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger but I'm not gonna close it off over here as if there was a cat sitting right here. And then because my cat has got some black and white marks on it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna color it in. You don't have to, you could leave it white. If you're using a different color, you could color it in like that. If you know some cats that um, are brown or uh, red or gray and you wanna color it like that, go for it. And I could color this in in different ways. I could color it in all black, but that's kind of like my, my cat tail. So I'm gonna, leave, I'm gonna leave that one like that. Because there was that tail there, now that I'm thinking about it, sometimes cat tails are also kind of curvy. And since this is supposed to be multiple cats, I think two tails would be really interesting. I'm gonna color it again. But this one's going to be inspired by a different cat that I know that just has a white tip and then it's all black. And this is just me. This is how I've decided to color it in. You might decide to do something completely different. Okay. So there's, there's my two tails. What else do I think of when I think of cats? Well, there are their whiskers. And you see how my A had this line that went further than um, the ascenders, the, the bars, the lines on the outside of the A here, it kind of went further. That reminds me of whiskers. And so I'm gonna keep drawing a few more lines there. So that now the A has whiskers. Now it kind of looks like a nose, right? Even though there are the lines over here, it's got this nose shape with these whiskers at the side. And so I'm gonna take my crayon, because I happen to have a red crayon, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna color it in red, like some cat's noses. In fact, my cat's nose has a little bit of black up at the top. There we go. And there. So I've, I've turned the A into a cat's nose. And then, I mean, I could leave it like that. Already we're starting to think about multiple cats because I've got the two tails. So that's obviously more than one cat or it's a special cat that has two tails, but probably it's two cats. I could finish this, uh, this shape here by drawing a cat, right? That's maybe it's laying down here and then have a little cat face. It's looking towards us. Right, and then I could do another one right here. Maybe, maybe uh, one that's one that's sitting up. Maybe he's peeking. There you go. He's peeking out the side of this one. There we go. And then uh, the legs coming down like this. Right. So now I've actually drawn some figures into into my word you can still see the a the t the s and the c here right but i've added a couple more details to show that this isn't just a cat it's cats multiple cats and i could keep going maybe there was 
maybe there's a sleeping cat up here. So now I'm thinking about, you know, those scratching perches where um, cats like to get up really high. Sometimes they scratch on the post down here. And so this, this cat, oh, you know what? I think I want to have a paw that comes down. <laughs> have you ever had a cat that is so sound asleep that their, their paw kind of comes off the side? There you go. So this cat is sitting there, but one paw is off to the side. And then one paw is over here, kind of sleeping on their paw. There we go. Some whiskers and then some sleepy eyes. There we go. So there are three cats, right? And so just by being, um, by responding to each of these letters, I made decisions. I made some figures and some forms. I'm gonna make this a little bit deeper because you kind of lose the T with the figure there, right? And so I didn't have any picture in mind. I didn't really know what was going to happen. I let the letters inspire me. I let the letters uh, be what I responded to as I went along and I made decisions um, based on a story that I was building out by filling in that, um, by filling in the meaning around that word. So there's one way of exploring it and yours probably looks completely different. Even if you did cats, right? It could have looked very different. Let's take the same word again and let's draw it in a different way. And if you're still drawing the same way as you were drawing before, keep going. You don't have to change. But I want to take that word again and I want to explore it in a different way. And so here I've got a slightly smaller piece of paper, right? They don't all have to be the same size. This was the edge of something that I cut off. And so the, the paper that I had was uh, I used and then I threw this in the recycling bin. And so this is what I'm going to use now. Um, and it looks like my marker is going through my page. So I'm going to take another piece of paper and I'm going to put it underneath. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to use the word cat skin. I'm going to make it a little smaller this time. So I've got a bit more space around it. All right. So this one I drew um, what the meaning was around it. But what if the word is being said by somebody? What if somebody was saying the word cats? Can you think of ways to draw the word that makes the word mean different things? So right now I've done it all in caps. So it could be that somebody's shouting cats. What can I add to this to make it really obvious that somebody's shouting? Well, I think I'm going to add an exclamation mark. There's no reason why I can't add some more marks to my word, right? I'm not really changing the word, but I am kind of changing the meaning. I made this really thick as if you couldn't ignore it, right? It's, it's so big, it's so bold. So it's not only being shouted, it's being shouted with emphasis. So I'm gonna make each of my letters really bold. Maybe your word is being whispered. How does that look different? Maybe somebody's saying it um, because they love cats. Could you draw the word differently so that it means something different? If somebody loved cats, maybe they don't like cats at all. What could it look like then? In fact, maybe mine is yelled out loud, but they're really frustrated. They're frustrated that there are cats everywhere. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to, because we're talking about somebody um, expressing or saying this word, I'm gonna add a speech bubble. But remember how I said, um, the person who was, who was saying this was really frustrated. Here, I'm gonna round up my S. There you go, I like that better. And you can stop at any time and make and change your marks as you're going along, right? There, as you're looking, um, if your stomach tells you that something doesn't look right, listen to it. Because we're not, we're not doing any of these things for keeps. So try out, try out a whole bunch of different things to see what, uh, what changes as you add marks. Okay, so this person who is saying this, who is yelling this, who is signing this with emphasis, they are upset with cats. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it so that um, uh, I'm gonna add some marks to my speech bubble to show that um, this person is upset. And so I'm gonna leave some marks in here and now I'm going to make it dark down here as if it was raining 
They're so frustrated. They're so upset that there are cats everywhere that their, their speech bubble is casting a shadow. And you know what, I'm gonna go all the way down into this, right? So this probably doesn't look like, like, uh, like happy cats. In fact, you know what, this kind of looks like legs now. Huh, I wonder, I wonder if I was to add some faces around the outside of this, how that would change how the speech bubble looks. <laughs> I'm gonna put some here. Now they really look like they're invading, right? So that person is frustrated because there are cats everywhere. You know what? I think I want to add some dark lines up here too. It's it's raining everywhere. They're, they are frustrated with cats. And same thing, even though I made that bold, the, the letters bold, I feel like the speech bubble needs to be bold too. If they are yelling it out, they are frustrated cats. Darn you cats. Get off my lawn. Stop eating my garbage. Stop chasing away the cats at my bird feeder. Or sorry, the, the birds at my bird feeder. <laughs> no, the cats are, are already at the bird feeder. What else do cats do that, that frustrate people? Uh, oh, cats knocking off things off of my, my, uh, my table. Drinking out of the toilet. <laughs> right? There you go. So that probably doesn't look like happy. Maybe it's fun though. Maybe they're fun frustrated. I feel like adding the cats on the outside, especially the cute little cartoon cats, makes it feel more like they're just frustrated than really angry. Then you could keep adding cats around the outside. You could add them at um, different angles. How else could you express cats um, using a speech bubble? I really like this one. I think I wanna do one more speech bubble. I'm gonna use the word cats again, but if you wanna start using a different word to explore, go for it. You don't have to use the word cats. You can come up with anything. Maybe you're not a cat person. Maybe you're a dog person. If you wanna write dogs instead, maybe you have a hamster. How does the word change or how do you draw it differently when you have one word, or sorry, a singular word versus a plural word? So this is a plural because I've got an S at the end, so it means multiple cats, more than one. But what if you only want to write a single word? C-A-T, right? Cat, or dog, or hamster, or bird, or shoe, cupcake, outside, downtown, baseball, any word. Write it down and see, and see if you can express it in these different ways. Um, and see how you write it, how it changes. So what I was thinking was, I, I, did these, I did these in printing. So I did that lowercase one so I could compare it with the capitals. Then I did capitals again, but I kind of made them fat capitals and then I added an exclamation mark. This time, I'm gonna write cats, only I'm gonna do it in cursive. So I went really slow and made sure my made sure that my lines were really um, uh, really emphasized. Right, I really did them with intention. Um, already, just looking at how I drew that, the C A T S in cursive compared to these, already it looks completely different. Right, this is the same word that I've written down in four different ways. And it looks completely different. And if we think about it, it kind of means something a little bit different, right? So yelling out cats, this one being kind of uh, cute with the picture in the background and we want to spend more time looking at it because there's more information. There are more things to notice here than this. This can kind of be still taken in as one, uh, one word, even more so in cursive because all the letters, all the marks, are combined, there really is only one mark, right? It's one continuous mark. It ends up being a word, I guess two, two words, but I get like that one's interconnected, right? I did have to lift my pen off to do the T there. So maybe two marks, if we count marks as me lifting um, the marker off the page. This is just two marks, but it's all connected as one 
one mark um, because of how it intersects. Whereas these, one, two, three, four, five, this is five separate um, characters to make the word cats. And same with this one, right? The letters are still not connected, even though the shapes are kind of connected, right? I guess if I had, if I made a mark here that made the A go over to the cat, we could make it so that all the letters are connected. But you know what? I'm going to leave it right now because it does, even, even though that whisker kind of touches that A there. But, the, you know, this cat here, I've left some white marks in between the T even though it does look like it's still connected, right? There is that mark there. There is some separation between the letters. So they still read as individual letters, whereas it's harder to read these as individual letters. I could draw out each of these marks individually, but it's a little bit weird in cursive, right? Cursive is designed so that all the letters connect. Just doing that looks completely different. Even though I, I did all the marks that I had here, but I didn't connect them, this looks so different. I'm not only going left to right, I'm going up down, right? What if I was to do the cursive where I did it left to right still? It looks weird, right? This. This is supposed to be together. What does this say? If this was how we were going to write it, um, what, is this, what does this mean? If we were just going to leave this, if we were gonna draw a comic, if we were gonna draw a picture and we just had all the cursive marks uh, separate, how does it feel different? Maybe we want to express being unsettled. Maybe we want something, uh, the person who is saying the word is really fancy, but they're emphasizing each uh, syllable. So they're saying ka a a <laughs> So maybe we're trying to be funny. We're trying to say something about the personality of the person who would be saying this. Maybe we're trying to express that somebody is jumbled or feeling strange. Maybe, I don't know. It's really weird. I don't think I would ever do this. Um, so it would have to be a very specific situation before I'd ever break up um, the cursive like this. I feel like I could actually do this because these read more like individual marks by themselves. And so if I was going to draw a picture um, where I was looking at each of these letters, uh, it's easier to see this as a C rather than to see it as cats. Right? So even by just changing the orientation, I can look at each of these letters, these marks by themselves, and they don't necessarily read cats. It reads C-A-T-S. Because we're used to reading left to right in English, um, it's hard to see this just as C-A-T-S, especially because I've got that capital C there, right? We read the spaces, but we still are reading that that's the word cats. So even just writing in cursive and breaking it into three different ways, I'm noticing a whole bunch of different things. So one, two, three, four, five, six different ways that we've expressed the same word and they can mean completely different things. Okay, I said I wanted to kind of explore the speech bubble thing again, but with all, with, but with a cursive word. And so this time what I wanna do is, I wanted to express that somebody really loves cats. Um, and so I'm going to do the speech bubble again. But this time, I'm going to draw some shapes around the outside. So hearts are a pretty traditional way of expressing that you like something. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do some cute faces again of the cats with really long ears. <laughs> there we go. And depending on the mark making tool you have, you might be able to get um, really detailed, right? So if you were doing, um, if you were using a small pen, you might be able to draw, um, and if you were doing cats, right? You might be able to draw one where you could actually get the, the rounded eyes of a cat. You could color in your eyes. Right, so you can get a little bit more expressive if you have a smaller mark making tool, maybe color in some. There you go. I've got 
got some marks on my cat's face, right? I wouldn't have been able to do that with my, um, with my Sharpie pen, right? So even just changing up the um, material, the way that you're drawing these shapes changes um, how much detail you can put in. Also, just looking at this word now, how it looks different. This, this looks like you want to pay more attention to it because it has more detail compared to everything else that is there. So you could bring in multiple media, you could bring in different uh, mark making tools to your one picture and see how that changes the meaning of the word that you're drawing. Okay, so I think, you know what, I think I want a couple more hearts down here. There we go. And I'm going to bring my speech bubble and I'm going to intersect each of these. All right, so what did I do differently? I had cats on this one, right? I drew cats on the outside of this speech bubble and I drew cats on the outside of this speech bubble, but why does it feel different when I drew them here compared to this one? Well, we already noticed, right, the detail one, so we wanna pay a bit more attention to it. But do you notice where the line is on this one? compared to where the line is on this one. The cats are on the outside of this one, right? So it kind of feels like they're invading. It feels like this person who is frustrated about cats is other, is outside, is, is, um, is perhaps not a cat person. There's separation. They're so frustrated that cats are crawling up the walls. They're crawling up their speech bubbles for, even, right? That's, they can't get rid of the cats. The cats are everywhere. They're peeking around corners. Whereas this one, the line kind of hugs the cat faces. They become inclusive. They could almost be inside of the speech bubble. What happens if we add more of the shapes inside the speech bubble? Right? So now they're inside. Now it really feels like the cats are loved. It is very difficult to draw a convincing cat with this marker. <laughs> it's so thick. There you go. Another cat. More hearts, right? And it feels like the more, um, the more shapes we add in here, the more this person is really obsessed. The person who is saying the speech bubble or who's signing the speech bubble really loves cats, right? At this point, because we have them all inside, I think if we were to draw some on the outside, it probably wouldn't change the, the meaning, but try it out. Once you've done it so that the, the shapes are included or bisected um, or kind of hugged by the lines, try adding some more on the outside. What does it do? Does it change the meaning? Maybe it feels like somebody who doesn't actually care that cats are crawling all over the place because they, they love the cats so much. So because of the story that we've already set up, because of the other information that we have, because of the cursive, which tends to be a bit more of a gentler way to, um, to write, right? It's, it's, um, it's generally a bit more fancy. Um, it's generally um, a little bit more delicate. When people do it in calligraphy, um, it can, it, it, it typically is something that people say is pretty, right? It's pretty cursive. Could you write, uh, if, you, if you can write in cursive, could you write cursive in a way that wasn't pretty? What if you were to fill in all the lines and make it really, really uh, bold, like this one? Would it change the meaning again? Try it out. So with the last part of our workshop, I think I wanna add, I wanna do a different word because we've tried this in, in different ways just so we can try something else um, a little bit different. So we, we added pictures, we tried the speech bubbles in different ways. Now, I think what I wanna do, I think I'm gonna use this paper here because this ended up being a little bit thicker. Same thing from the recycling bin, it's kind of crinkled in the middle, no big deal. Um, and so I'm going to, what word am I going to use? I'm going to use the word 
I'm going to use the word rain because I am on uh, I am in so-called Vancouver right now, and it is raining. And so um, I want to use I want to use the word rain. And so um, I wrote it in the corner here, so we have the we have the word uh, in our brains, but. You can see how I write words. They may be a little bit differently or different from how you write words, right? So if you were, we, we talked about uh, ways of writing. We talked about all caps. I'm gonna use my, my grease marker. There we go. So we talked about all caps. But then we've got a sentence case where you have a capital at the beginning. And then there's all lowercase. Um, but what about if we wrote like me, where I sometimes don't actually follow um, the pattern, I did a capital N at the end. And that's just how I like to write because I've been writing for a really long time and, and you can see I know how to write um, in all caps and sentence case, lowercase. Um, so this is just a fun way for me to write. And I just decided to choose that N. That's just how I make my mark. That's how my handwriting shows um, my personality when I'm writing. Some people dot their eyes with heart. Some people will uh, have not very much space between their words. Some people write really big, right? And so when you're when you're looking at your handwriting, that also, those are all marks. How does your handwriting look different from the other people you're making with? How does it look different from mine? Can you write something, put it to the side and then come back to it later and recognize your handwriting? As you um, as you get older and as you keep writing more, you might notice that your handwriting or your mark making or your gesture changes. And that can be because uh, we're influenced by things that we see. I know that the reason that I like to write my A's like this was because there was somebody when I went to high school who did their A's like that. And so I really liked it when I started making my A's like that. But you can do your A's um, like that. Some people will do their A's like that. Some people will make sure they have a really defined line over there. They're, they're all A's, right? But each one is different and is, um, is specific to the gesture of the person that has made it. And so even just looking at the letters on their own, that's a way of expressing um, the mark making um, through your gesture, through your hands. So I just wanted to call it out because without even thinking about it, I made a capital N at the end of that word. <laughs> And I could do that. You know what? This is this is my mark making. So I'm going to make sure that I do do that capital N. But I do know that it is supposed to be spelled uh, with a lowercase n at the end. And you can spell it however you want because this isn't for keeps. If people are always telling you you shouldn't write in caps or that you shouldn't write with a capital N or a capital A in a, in a letter, today you have permission because it's not for keeps. We're just trying things out. It doesn't have to be sentence case. It doesn't have to be for schoolwork. It doesn't have to be for a book. Okay, so this time what I wanted to do was I wanted to introduce something called contrast and texture. And this is a way of bringing mark making um, or um, adding depth. And in previous weeks, if you had checked out our texture workshops, we did three weeks of texture. Um, we explored different ways to use mark making to show texture. Well, now we're in the weeks of mark making and I'm gonna bring texture back into it. Well, that's the fun thing about exploring art is that when you explore one thing, you learn a whole bunch of different things about uh, that technique or that subject or that theme, and then you can bring it in when you're exploring other things, right? So I wanted to bring in uh, texture and contrast because rain has a whole bunch of different things um, going for it. Rain in itself is kind of hard to see right? If you, if you were outside, you're probably not looking at the rain, but there are lots of things that change when it rains. There's lots of things that look different themselves when rain hits it. You might not be able to see the rain, 
but have you ever been outside and your hair gets wet when it's raining or your clothing gets wet when it's raining or your backpack gets wet when it's raining? You might not be, be able to see the rain, but you can notice things about your hair, your clothes, your backpack, your shoes that you wouldn't have, you know, that you wouldn't necessarily, um, that wouldn't happen unless it was raining or unless they got wet. Um, but it's hard to actually look at it and say, that is rain. That looks like rain. It just kind of looks wet, right? So if we, were to, if we were to think about the word rain and try and express it with uh, texture, how can we do that? Well, we could think about how it falls, right? And it usually falls from the sky, right? From up high down to the earth, right? So there's kind of a downward motion. So to begin with, I'm going to write some lines here. There you go. There's my rain. I'm drawing the path of the rain, right? Rain doesn't usually come in these long drops like that. It's the path that the rain followed. What if I just wanted to draw droplets of rain? So same thing, um, I, I showed the motion that it was coming from um, above to below by making a raindrop and showing the raindrop was the, the small part of the raindrop was up there because the heavy part of the water that's being pulled down with gravity down to the earth is like that. Would it look the same if I drew it like that? What does that actually look like? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. doesn't really look like rain anymore, does it? Kind of looks like seeds. Or it looks like I drew the panel upside down. If you were trying to draw something really weird, gravity had changed, you're drawing a sci-fi comic and aliens are sucking up all the water or, um, I don't know. Why else would rain be going up? Maybe you're showing evaporation, right? Maybe you're showing after it rains how, um, how water gets uh, gets condensed back up into clouds again. Maybe that's something that you wanted to draw, understanding that, that that's the opposite way now, right? That it's going from the earth up to the sky. So path, showing the rain, showing the wrong way, be a little bit weird. How else could we do it? Well, what if that square all of a sudden became a window? How can we show rain on a window? Well, same thing, if uh, the water goes down, maybe we could draw it where it's so wet that it's coming down in sheets, right? So the kind of wavy line is the water dripping down the surface. Maybe the rain is coming down so hard that it's hitting the, the window in different at different speeds. So some of them it's hitting and it's actually creating a ripple. Some of them it's running down the, the side of the window. And so I've added a few there. So there's a few ways to draw rain. I talked about um, a backpack before. There we go. So there's the front of the backpack. Here we can kind of see the straps over there. There we go. And then maybe it's got a little toggle down there. So how do we want to show that this backpack was out in the rain? Well, maybe maybe the bottom of it got soaked through, right? So there's some, it got wet at the bottom. Maybe we show that it's in a puddle. Maybe we show that it's so wet that it's actually dripping. We just put it down and the water is dripping off of it. So this is a couple of ways to express the word rain without the letters rain. But now that we've explored that, can we bring these back to the letters? So if I was to write down my letters here, I'm going to write it the same way as I wrote it up here, but you can write your letters however you want. And maybe you didn't explore rain. Maybe you explored um, snow. I know it's snowing in a whole bunch of places on Turtle Island right now. 
or maybe you just decided to use the word water or maybe you decided to use the word pudding, right? I told you you could use whatever word you wanted. There we go. So I made some block, block letters and I did this so that I would have some space in between to color. But if you wanted to start with just the outlines of your letters here, you could do that, right? There's so many different ways you can explore this mark making. It doesn't have to be the same. But I'm gonna take some of these techniques that I tried over here, and I'm gonna bring them into uh, my letter here for rain. And so I think I'm gonna start by, I really like, I really like the lines here. I'm not actually gonna color in the word itself. I'm gonna go on the outside. So just like how um, when you're inside, the rain doesn't usually hit you unless you know there's a drop in the ceiling. This is the rain not getting in inside any of the letters. There we go. So I've got some lines there showing that it's raining outside. And if I wanted to, you know, I could probably add some clouds. Right? Yeah, I'll do a few more because I already started. You don't have to do with clouds, but why not? Right? So now it's going down like this. The eye was really high up there. And so I'm going to show that it got really wet. I'm going to show all the letters. They got a little wet at the top, right? Just at the top, though. Like this one, the, the bag got soaked at the bottom. This one, it's still actively raining, so it's still just the tops of the letters. They got wet. So the rain didn't get through inside, but it got on top of it. But maybe it did get a little wet. Actually, maybe it's starting to do a puddle. So I'm going to take that puddle and I'm going to put it around the outside because that's where it's soaking through. It's creating a puddle underneath the letters there. And it's so very wet. Oh, you know what? I think I want a couple of lines there because it went behind the A. And it's so very wet, it's still very wet, um, that a couple of drops have come off of these letters. Well, I can go over the lines here, that's fine. There we go. In fact, maybe the rain is coming down at different angles. I want to draw some dots showing the big wet uh, raindrops. Maybe the raindrops are hitting the puddle at the bottom and they're splashing up, right? And there you go, right? So there was the word rain where I used the textures that I learned up here and some contrast to show the different kinds of rain, the negative space where I didn't draw anything in the letters versus all the positive space, the lines that I drew at the background to show that the rain was hitting these letters but wasn't inside these letters, that they were separate. So those are just a couple of ways that we can explore mark making and using words. There's lots of different ways that you can explore it. And I encourage you to, to try this out with different words. You'll, you'll find that as you're using different words, you'll learn and, and discover different things. And when you're all finished, if you're only using one color, there's no reason why you can't start bringing different colors in and see how that changes. Because remember, coloring is just a different kind of mark making with a different kind of tool. It's adding information to your drawing or your exploration that you didn't have at the beginning. Thank you so much for exploring with me this week. We're going to have one more week exploring mark making next week, next Saturday. Um, and I'd love to see you then. But, but for now, thank you. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm going to leave the camera running for a little bit, as I always do, because I want to clean up and it's because that's part of practicing respect. Um, and I look forward to making along with you next week. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>